with fluorine it forms hexahalides, sulfur, selenium, tellurium, you know, they are going to be octahedral, they are going to be octahedral, this is going to be the so called ease of hydrolysis, ease of hydrolysis, at times you know they will want you to write an order of the ease of hydrolysis and mind it, this time I am calling it hydrolysis because you know I will expect the negative end of the molecule to form the hydroacid, the positive end of the molecule to form the oxyacid, I am seeing the molecule getting ri ripped apart, yes or no? And there, the ease and rate of be higher if the difference in electronegativity is more. So, fluorine is going to be the negative end of the molecule. So, the, the other end getting less electronegative, the other end getting less electronegative would aid in hydrolysis. Yes or no? Yes or no? SF6 plus water. Again, I have told you in hydrolysis, I uh, will want to keep it simple. The negative end of the molecule should get attached to the positive end of water forming the hydroacid. So, it is going to be HF and the, the positive end of the molecule would attach with the negative end of water OH minus forming the oxyacid. Certainly, you will want to retain the oxidation numbers. You will want to retain the oxidation numbers. Fine. Tetrahalides, tetrahalides, SF4, SEF4, TEF4, yet again this should be the order of hydrolysis, this should be the order of hydrolysis, they are going to be SP3 dehybridized, SP3 dehybridized expected to be pentagonal, trigonal bipyramidal, 4 bond pair, 1 lone pair, 4 bond pair, 1 lone pair, yes or no? 4 bond pair, 1 lone pair, recall all of that. Strike number 5, the way we used to do it in class 11, recall valence electron 6 plus 4, 10 by 2, 5 pair of bond pair plus lone pair, you can see 4 bond pairs, so 1 lone pair, 4 bond pair, 1 lone pair, what was the, what was the geometry? 4 bond pair, 1 lone pair, what was the geometry? 4 bond pair, 1 lone pair. It is not T phase. Yes, it is equatorial, I know that. Can our bonding bond go? Should we go back to bonding, chemical bonding? Jent, want to say something? Nothing? Anyone? Four bond pair, well known pair. What's the structure? What's the geometry called? I teach you VACPR one class completely. And even if you know, even if seesaw, seesaw or irregular tetrahedron, seesaw or irregular tetrahedron. So, you about a bent rule, SPCD, lone pairs will go into equatorial position, SF4, man, there were three equatorial positions and two axial positions. If a lone pair goes at equatorial position in SF4, I was also kind of calling it K shape, I was also kind of calling it K shape. And, you told, and I told you, you know, if you, if you take it as you know the base of the seesaw, this is the wooden plank, this is where you find yourself, you find your friend there and it is kind of a seesaw, yes or no? Four bond pair, one lone pair, seesaw or irregular tetrahedron, irregular tetrahedron. Well, this was T shape, CLF3, CLF3, 7 plus 3, 10 by 2, 5, 
bond pair plus lone pair 5, 3 bond pair, 2 lone pair. And now, when you, when you put 2 lone pairs, when you put 2 lone pairs, equatorial, you find this T shape. This is how you get the T. The rule was in SP3D, the lone pair would go equatorial. The lone pair would go equatorial. Yes or no? In SPCD2, it would go axial. And that is how you are getting square pyramidal and square planar. Let us move on. This has to be the order of. So, the structure is going to be irregular tetrahedron or seesaw shape, and this has to be the ease of hydrolysis. And just for the sake of it, an example SEF4 plus water. You know the negative end is going to form the hydroxid HF and SE would form H2 SeO3 plus 4 from plus 4. Okay? All right. We saw oxides, we saw halides, and now we'll talk of a kind of compounds which are called oxyhalides. Oxyhalides. Only sulfur and selenium take down, only sulfur and selenium form oxyhalides, only sulfur and selenium form oxyhalides, only sulfur and selenium form oxyhalides, They are called thionyl halides, they are called thionyl halides, these are called selenyl halides. Only sulfur and selenium will form oxyhalides. And again, some popular problems are based upon uh, the hydrolysis of uh, these compounds. SOCl2 plus water, it again will want HCl and H2SE. H2SO3 to be formed, maybe you'll need two moles of water here, whatever. Thionyl chloride. In organic chemistry was giving you halide from alcohol, halide from acid, with pyridine, without pyridine, over alkyl carbon, acyl carbon. Here at least you will want to know how it is going, going to get hydrolyzed and then, well, SO2Cl2 is going to give you HCl and H2SO4, this is called sulfonyl chloride, this is called sulfonyl chloride. Let us move on, let us move on and as I told you, you know, we will want to uh, kind of know the structures of oxy acids of sulfur a little more closely. I do not know if I have done it before in, in class 11 with you or not, but chances are generally there are problems based upon the structure of oxy acids of group 6, particularly sulfur. So, we will want to know the structure of all the oxy acids of sulfur at least. Before I go into that, some basic information about the commonly known allotropes of sulfur. Allotropes of sulfur, you know. Sulfur is going to be existing in different allotropic forms. Let me just introduce the names and some common properties of these, these allotropes. Now, the allotropic forms of sulfur and the most common form is going to be S alpha, which is also called the rhombic or the octahedral form, which if heated above 95.6 degrees Celsius, now this number is particularly important even for your, your school or board exams, believe me. It is supposed to be the transitory temperature between one crystalline form to another crystalline form of sulfur S beta, which is more popularly called the monoclinic 
or the prismatic form. Now I told you both are crystalline forms of sulfur. A sulfur is beta, both are crystalline forms of sulfur. 95.6 degrees kind of the transitory temperature. It said that below this temperature, below this temperature, alpha form is more stable. Above this temperature, beta form is more stable. Both are crystalline forms, yellow in color. And because at lower temperature, room temperature below 95.6, you know, S alpha rhombic form is going to be the more stable form. This is supposed to be the most stable form of sulfur. And it's at all other forms of sulfur. We will just want to very quickly note it down. Below 95.6, this crystalline form of sulfur is supposed to be the most stable form of sulfur. And it said that all the other forms would gradually converge to the octahedral form only. With, with, with sulfur, the different allotropic forms, you expect its solubility in carbon disulfide. Sulfur is yellow in color. <coughs> and with, with sulfur, you expect solubility in carbon disulfide. Told you this is the most stable form. Above this temperature, this is the most stable form. Both are going to dissolve in carbon disulfide. This melts at around 114, 115 degrees Celsius. This is the melting point. This melts at around 119 degrees Celsius. And if this melts at 119 degrees Celsius, the liquid form is called S lambda. Sulfur lambda is going to be the liquid form, which on further heating, which on further heating is going to become thick and viscous liquid form, which is S mu, which is also the liquid form of sulfur, but this is more viscous and thicker. Time permitting and if required, you know, I would uh, maybe want to tell you why with increase in temperature, the, the liquid loses and becomes more viscous with increase in temperature. Because with more, more increase in temperature, you expect uh, matter to become more mobile. So, maybe we will go into that if, the, if when the time is right. The initial liquid form is found to be more mobile, more clear. On heating, it initially becomes thicker and at a temperature which is triple 4, which is supposed to be the boiling point of sulfur, it is going to be the gaseous form. I told you even in the gaseous form, you are going to find octatomic rings. Even in the gaseous form, uh, sulfur is found octatomic rings and on, on heating, you know, it could be broken into smaller units. It said that at a temperature around 2000 degrees Celsius, you could get mono, monoatomic sulfur atoms. <coughs> but by and large, the gaseous form would also be octatomic, would also be octatomic. Now, at least you will want to know the following facts. First of all, these are the two crystalline forms of sulfur. The rest are amorphous forms or liquid forms. This S lambda, if thrown in cold water, S lambda if thrown in cold water is supposed to give you plastic sulfur, solid, plastic sulfur, solid but amorphous, solid but amorphous. I guess you understand the basic difference between crystalline and amorphous is not only a defined arrangement of particles, it is also about having defined melting point. A crystalline solid will have a defined soft melting point. This is amorphous solid, plastic sulfur. And this is the only form of sulfur which is insoluble in carbon disulfide. This is the only form of sulfur which is insoluble in carbon disulfide. Keep this in mind. And as I told you, even in vapor form, octatomic uh, are found. Basics of stoichiometry while we are doing numericals uh, on sulfur vapor, the molecular weight which we get is you know uh, the eighth multiple of the atomic weight for this reason only. <coughs> we will talk about the, the rupture of uh, the crystalline form to the liquid form and related with the temperature when the time is right. For the time being as I told you, we just wanted to know about uh, the different allotropes and then we will want to go into the structure of the oxy acids of sulphur. Should not take long. 
what I want is for you people to take down a question. Uh, the question is draw the structure and predict, draw the structure and predict, draw the structure and predict the oxidation number of sulfur, draw the structure and predict the oxidation number of sulfur in the following of the acids, in the following of the acids H2SO3, H2SO4, H2S2O2, H2S2O3, H2S2O4, H2S2O5, H2S2O6, H2S2O7, H2S2O8, H2SO5. These many. I don't know if we did something of this kind in chemical bonding or not. But we will want to know the structure and the oxidation number of sulfur, both average and individual, it might be different. You know, this is going to be the structure of sulfurous acid to begin with. The limitations would be for sulfur, you will not want more than 6 arms around it because you know, the maximum valency allowed will be 6. You will want to keep things simple, you will want to, you know, uh, defend the oxidation number. Try it out. Uh, we will resume in another 5 minutes. So, so, give it a try at least, you know, uh, you will want to draw these structures and, and reduce the oxidation numbers also.